what's going on YouTube how's it going fam pushing out another video today's video is gonna be about a uh, lucid reality man uh, I think that's what I'm gonna name the the title of the video lucid reality and uh, today I just want to hit on like how you know uh, you know a lot of cats talk about and you know basically there's a lot of work being done on becoming lucid in dreams right so a lot of studies have been done and a lot of lectures have been done telling us in the past that you know our dreaming state is reality and that this state that you're in this conscious awareness that you're in right now is the dream so what does that mean overall when you place things together when you put things together that means that if this is the dream right that means that you're sleeping that means that the dream state that's happening right now that you should be consciously aware of is now is here is what you are aware of at this point in time in this current moment so if you are aware that this is a dream and you're wandering around as if it's a dream that means that you are are not lucid at all so the work that should be done should be done on you becoming lucid in the dream world not not the dream world so much to say as when you're sleeping dream world but this dream world because this is a dream so how do you become lucid in the dream world that we consider to be everyday reality by taking back your subconscious mind by synchronizing your reality to your most divine purpose and doing the work um to to unlock that and to, to, to maintain control over it as much as you can 24 7 7 days a week and so there is lots of things that you could do you know what I mean like you could get books meditations anything that's gonna bring you to to utter focus in the moment in the now you I mean you you've heard about the new age movement about being mindful mindfulness 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 what they're really telling you is that when you become mindful you become lucid, right? You become lucid in this thing called reality, which is nothing more than the dream itself. And when you have synchronization and you become lucid in this current dream, it becomes easier from that point when you're working with the subconscious mind because all commands are taken from the subconscious mind, pushed over to the conscious mind to be uh, projected, manifested, and revealed and materialized here in the physical reality. So when you're doing your work to become lucid in your everyday reality, when you do dream at night, you're gonna become lucid there, eventually at some point. Now, when people do the, the lucid work, at like the lucid dream work, what they're really doing in all actuality is doing a lot of high events, uh, magical work where they're becoming lucid in the dream world, which is dealing with the subconscious mind, which is great, do that because that helps prep you for becoming lucid in the dream world, which is this world. And so when you do that, you're able to synchronize and you'll notice the synchronizations between the two, the two, the two realms, I want to say the two, I don't want to say two realms of thought because it's all the same thing, but yeah, we'll say the two realms of thought. And so when you become synchronized between the two realms of thought, the conscious and the subconscious, which this world, this dream world, this, this, uh, physical matrix this mundane reality is the representation of the conscious mind right and when you become lucid in your subconscious mind what happens is the veil that separated the two no longer exists because you're able to travel between the two at will whenever you want and so that's when a lot of people are like oh man all my shit is synchronized as I want it to be um, when I want it to be you know, and then you, I mean, a lot of people may not call it that. They may not call it as being or recognize it as being lucid in the physical reality. But that's exactly what's happening. You're becoming lucid. And so the dream world becomes an overall big, big thing, right? And then you'll start to, to notice that things will subtly line up and, and, and work out more in your favor. So, you know, you can always get books. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, basically, learning how to, to 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 meditate and how to you know synchronize your reality 
best thing to do is to do do a lot of magical work, man. Do a lot of magical work. You know what I mean? Like it's better it's better done than said. You know what I'm saying? Like start working out these magical books, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, y'all y'all see how I post videos about my experiences with X, Y, and Z grimoire. Start doing that because what happens is is training your conscious reality to mesh up with your um, your subconscious reality. And then in that process, you're forcing because what you're doing is in the process is that you're recognizing the tools that are being laid before you as what they are. So, if, for example, if you're uh, meditating on a sigil, right, and you see that sigil as whatever that sigil is, you know, uh, it could be anything that sigil is presenting itself to you as exactly what it is. So therefore, your mundane matrix has to recognize that sigil for what it is. You know what I'm saying? And then obviously the subconscious interpretation comes in and then that's how you change it. And then once you, you know, you recognize the subconscious interpretation of it, then you enforce it on the, the, the grounding uh, uh, manifestation of the sigil. And then the sigil becomes a, a gateway, an activation point to manifest that reality. And then there you go, it's an entire cycle. Okay, and so that that that's a good way to start. You know what I'm saying? Start working out of these uh, these books. You know, um, start reading books, man, and, and, and look for the ritual experience out of each and every single book. Even if it's a book that's nonfiction, man, read that book as if it's something that you're gonna create a ritual out of, right? That's another way to become lucid in your your mundane reality. If you're reading a book, say for instance, uh, um. I don't know, uh, a book about fishing, right? <laughs> Look at it like, okay, so I'm reading this book about fishing. I'm going to the water. The water represents the subconscious mind. I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch some fish. The fish represents any type of deity that I want. And then when I capture the fish, then I'm gonna create the ritual uh, uh, to cook the fish. And then I'm offering my fish spirits, you know, the essence from that fish. And then I'm gonna eat it, I'm gonna embody it. And then therefore I become the actual entity, the energy of that fish. Now, what does that fish represent to me? That fish represents whatever, prosperity, abundance, whatever. And so therefore that's a ritualized experience in just reading a book about fishing. Something simple as that can, can, can shift your mundane reality and make it lucid. Where now you're in control at, in, in each and every single thing that you do through your daily life. And, and taking control over it. That way, when you do dream at night, your subconscious mind speaks to you in, in exactly the way that you experience your physical mundane reality. And then it opens up another gateway to give you even more in-depth information about it. So we'll take the fishing example. Say for instance, you did the fishing, you ate the fish, blah, 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 blah. You, later, on, you, later on at night, you go to sleep and then your subconscious mind starts to, to, to speak to you and give you pictures and stuff about different types of fish. It, it opens up a gateway and then you start having dreams about Atlantis. And then you're like, what the fuck? That's your, that's your subconscious mind linking up and becoming lucid about your mundane experience and your mundane experience becomes the gateway for your subconscious mind. So that's how you can do it. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about was, um, you know, eternal spirituality. Now, this is one of my things that, that I, I favor the most, which a lot of brothers are out there, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to uh, to my man's Rogue Titan, you know what I'm saying? Yo, I appreciate that, that shout out, brother, but, you know, he, he, he's on his shit. Check him out. Anyway, so he talks about self-deification, and I, I totally agree with the brother on that. And so, you know, uh, another thing that you could do is, you know, when you're doing, you know, internal work, don't so much visualize your external environment or you externally as, as this is how I go about it, as the deity or the entity or the energy. See yourself from the inside, pouring and pushing that energy out into the world. And then that way, what you're doing is you're internally uh, transmuting. You're, you're doing the internal alchemy through visualization. You know what I'm saying? You're visualizing the, the core of you, the very essence of you, the very internal aspect of you, and you're pushing it out 
into the into the physical environment and then what happens slowly is your physical form will start to take on the attributes of whatever deity that you're working with and then you'll start to notice that your body will change and shift now what this happens what happens is and what goes on is that you're actually going through a physical death right it's a form of a physical death because now your ego which holds the mundane reality together that that basically glues your reality together through your physical body is starting to shift and change on the quantum level okay and as it shifts and change on the quantum level your physical forms your physical form your physical body begins to take on a shape and essence of whatever that energy is that you're evoking and that you're working with on the inside simple uh simple meditations can work with that you know what i'm saying sit down um go going to you know get a black mirror you know i'm always talking about black mirrors because black mirrors are the gateway of the subconscious mind it represents eternal darkness blah 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 you know look into a describe into a black mirror or even even if you know close your eyes go into eternal darkness and then what you're going to do is you're going to start to visualize your your eternal self as you visualize it change and then put in as much effort as you can into that internal change and then push it out into and visualize yourself pushing it out into the physical reality through the physical form that you have that holds this mundane matrix together for you right and so when you're doing that internal that internal spirituality your mundane reality has to respond to what you're experiencing internally so therefore your interactions with people um, how you view the mundane structures everything will have to correspond attract itself and relate to whatever you're you're revealing or whatever you're manifesting out on the physical plane okay and so I'll probably go more in depth um, I'm always saying I'm gonna I'm go in depth but I, I probably will go in depth on this one the internal spirituality um, because that's highly important if you're doing this work you know what I'm saying like you can't you can't <laughs> <laughs> you can't really expect to change your physical reality from an outside perspective, man. It doesn't work like that. You got you got so many forces. You know what I'm saying? You got the demiurge who eats off of that shit, man. So if you're if you're trying to change your physical reality from the outside, man, you're gonna come up against so much resistance. Like, I'm telling you. But I mean, obviously that's that's a part of the game, right? That's gonna train you to to, to work your will. Even if you are viewing it from an outside view, but it's gonna be hard. And, and trust me, that's not what this is. That's not really what this is about. It's about going internal. That's a, it's about doing the internal alchemy and doing the internal work. So when you start viewing things from an internal perspective, you're able to change your physical and mundane reality easier, man. It comes. It becomes a lot easier for you. And so uh, go inside. Do your meditations from the inside out. Don't don't really, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, if you're viewing the image of yourself as that deific force from the uh, from an outside perspective. So say for example, you're doing your meditation and you see your physical environment in your in your mind's eye as you're doing your meditation, that's still internal. You know what I'm saying? It's not external. What will be considered external is when you open your eyes and you see the physical mundane matrix as it's presenting itself to you externally, right? But when you take the meditation, you take all the, the physical structures and stuff inside internally, that's the internal work that I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? And then when you're changing yourself internally through your visualization and imagination, then that's when the physical reality itself will shift and mold, right? So you're doing it from the inside out, okay? And so that's just something to think about um, you know, I speak, you know, uh, uh, I try to speak in a way that makes sense. So, um, obviously, you know, if, if none of this stuff makes sense or if none of it is coming across clear, um, hit me up comment section below and I'll explain it to the best of my ability for you guys. All right. Hopefully you guys are still doing your work. I'll catch you guys on the other side. Peace.